Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Good afternoon. Today I'm working on this Toro Recycler with a quantum engine on it. I got this through a trade. I traded my green Tecumseh push mower with a bag that I found on the street, got it running. I actually put another engine on there from another one from a neighbor. Anyway, I wanted it because this one has a good bag. It's a little moldy, but there's no rips in it. It's a good bag. Not to mention the Toro Recycler bags, hard to come by. Uh, this one's in, I mean, it, it, it's okay, but there's actually a hole over here. You know what I mean? Also, the front wheels are completely locked up, seized. It won't, it won't move. But there's a lot of crap in between there. So maybe I might remove the wheels and blow it out, whatever, and see what kind of debris is in there, why it's all locked up like that. And uh, we're going to be using a lot of bit, a lot of uh, toolbox buddy from my friends over at Lucas. <laughs> They actually discontinued this product because what's better than this is their penetrating oil. So you just use the penetrating oil as a lubricant as well. Um, I actually like this stuff because it's kind of like WD-40. Anyway, if you look at the um, drive cable and the engagement handle, it seems to work, right? But it needs a little bit of adjustment as well as some oiling. I'm just going to oil the areas here. I'm going to pull it, oil retract so that the oil drags it into the cable see? and we've got upward mo upward motions so we'll let gravity pull it down just gonna work that a little bit get it smoother and it's already smooth and we're gonna take the wheels off and kind of check out why the wheels don't move in the front I'm going to give you an overview of what this looks like right now. As you can see, this has been left out for about two years in the guy's backyard. I don't even know if the uh, engine turns, you know. And it's a primer, which I hate. Because more than likely, that primer bulb's not going to work and it's not going to prime. Wheels are locked. This one goes forward a little, but that's it. This one doesn't go forward. The rest of it seems like it's okay. Rear wheels are good. It is the high wheel. Bone dry. Earl's good. Right at full, clear. It's good. Let's see if it... Uh, I can pull it. This cable's still a little bit kinky, but I'm going to work it back and forth a little bit. Alright. Slowly. It's not going to start because there's no gas. Okay, I've got to loosen it up now. Feels like it has good compression. Let's flip this to its side. Look underneath. Your typical uh, Toro Gator blades, Gator type blades, they have the edges over here which mulch really well I like them uh-huh look at that look at this belt is off okay is off the pulley pulley is rusted look at that that's terrible that's no good and I don't think I have a pulley like that you guys see that that's probably why it doesn't work ooh This is never a good sign when the washer pops out like that. I may have gotten a bad deal. I'm gonna take off the blade and try to figure out that belt situation. All right, at least that came off pretty easily. 
Blade's decent. It's rusty, but look, look at the edge. It's very sharp. It's almost like, almost like this really wasn't used very much at all, you know? But I'm kind of confused as to why it's so rusty on the inside and not so rusty on the outside. You know what I mean? Kind of like, uh, as if he mowed the lawn when the grass was super wet, left the wet grass in there without, you know, cleaning it out. And then that moisture stayed here for the period of time that the grass was there. So this uh, belt keeper bracket here is attached to two of the three engine mounting bolts. So to remove that, I don't know. I, I don't have good luck removing the engine mounting bolts, especially in this condition, because more than likely it's gonna strip, you know? Let's get a 9 16th and see if it'll, it'll budge. Sorry, uh, half inch. I'm just gonna see if it budges. If it doesn't budge, I'm not gonna try. Sometimes if you if you take away the extension, it'll have more torque. Yeah, that's not coming off. Let's try the bottom one. Yeah, that's not coming off either. So I'm gonna just try and weasel the belt onto the uh, onto the. Um, pulley but the pulley looks dunsky anyway you know I might have to just think about this for a bit so this is the same logic as taking a removing a flywheel off of a uh, engine you put outward leverage towards uh, outward leverage to pull the adapter outwards while you have the bolt into the crankshaft I don't really have good a good feeling about this but I'm going to just tap it a little bit. Yeah, that's not, that, that adapter is not coming off. This adapter is, the thing is, even if I, even if the self-propulsion works, right, I would need to get a new adapter because uh, the condition this adapter's in, it's so rusty on the pulley, it'll just shred this belt if I ever got it going, you know? But I don't even know if this thing works right now, the, the self-propulsion, so why go through all this if the self-propulsion doesn't work, right? If self-propulsion doesn't work, then I would convert this to just a push mower, right? Obviously, I would get a lot less money for it, but uh, I could keep the pulley on to where it is, cut the belt, get, the, get rid of the belt, right? If the engine runs and stuff, we just put the blade back on here and this will be a push mower. So I guess we, before I try to remove this, which is a big pain in the butt, right? And fix this up over here, I have to see if the propulsion works. So let's take the wheels off, right? And uh, check out the situation. Just a half inch. wheels damaged but the gears are good the teeth in the in the thing is good look at this that is that is really rusty I am actually kind of amazed that it still spins all right let's just drown this a little bit kind of loosen up whatever some rust that's in here I should use penetrating oil for that though. I'm removing the bottom two bolts that hold the pulley cover. That way we can get a better look at what the uh, transmission looks like. I'm gonna try to get the belt at least onto the uh, shaft. I have to flip this around the other side because the dipstick has to be on the lower side if I rotate this, oil is going to spill out. I'm going to remove this wheel too. Teeth are good here too. Let's 
just doesn't have that washer that that other wheel had. You know, the washer. And this is frozen. This one won't turn. I might have to remove this gear, and smooth it out. Because this one's stuck. So the good news is, I've got the belt back onto the pulley again. Yes, the pulley is trashed. And it's, when you turn the crankshaft, it turns the pulley, turns the belt. The belt is actually turning the pulley on the transmission. And as you can see, it is in fact moving. So I have a feeling that the transmission is good. But this will not turn so this is seized onto the shaft gonna have to remove this try to get extract this gear off and uh, smoothen out the uh, shaft from the rust and unseize it It's coming. Keyway in here too. So this thing's not budging. It's really in there. I tried yanking this off. It's just seized on the inside. It's got a brand new can of penetrating oil from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. I'm just gonna let this thing do its magic, let it soak for a bit. And we'll see what happens. It's a process, you know? Shout out to April Breland from Bogalusa, Louisiana for buying a sticker. And thanks to Odell Pace for donating $3 to the channel. Thanks a lot for supporting the channel. PayPal.me slash mowers and blowers. Every dollar counts to keep the videos coming every day. I've been banging this and banging it. And look at this. It's coming out. I have to be careful because I think I remember there's springs in here. Come on. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the washer. So yeah, this is all rusted out over here. Very rusty. I'm gonna grind it up and make it smooth. from the keyway and there is a small spring in there cleaned it up got 
how to clean the inside of this too. So as you can see, it's now smooth. And when you pull it backwards, it clicks, see? And then when you put it going forward, it, the keyway stops the gear. I'm gonna use some Red and Techie grease, spray grease from Lucas Oil. Just a couple of drops right at the keyway area. Check out it percolating there. And then we'll put this assembly back on again. Nice, check that out. Smooth, man. I'm gonna put the wheel back on now. Oh man, I forgot to put this on first. Idiot! I finally got that on correctly. Put a little bit of spray grease on the uh, shaft for the uh, wheel. And uh, let's just hope I put this on correctly. I mean, I want to say that this thing goes like that. Like a spacer? That's what I want to say. That? Or does that go over here? I don't think it goes over there. It goes over here. Flat part. Yeah, it's got it. Yeah, that's it. That's a ticket. Just gotta find the hole. Get the shaft in the hole. <laughs> Look at that. Tight. Goes backwards. And it clicks when it goes backwards, which it's supposed to do. And when it, you go forward, it stops. Oh. Well, if you're free rolling it, it should move too. Well, that's because the transmission's locked up. Yeah, transmission. I gotta work out the transmission. All right. Well, put both wheels back on again. And here you go. Rolls forward. Backwards. Pulls forward. Pulls backward. And when it's engaged, this thing turns and it propels forward. So it appears that the transmission works. I just need this dreaded cable. This cable's always done ski, you know? So lots of a little bit of it. Getting the transmission all worked out really wasn't very hard. Just kind of messy, that's all. Pretty stoked about that. Uh, should we put some gas in it and just see if it starts? Let's do that. Okay, I put some gas in it. It's the primer kind, so let me feel. Eh, actually, it feels okay. Primed it a few times. Remember, the belt is not connected, so we don't have to worry about it. Let's see if it starts. Oh, that, that cable is hinky. This feels funny, you know? It's not smooth. All right, here we go. Maybe this thing's not engaged fully. 
Maybe let's spray it with some carb cleaner. Look at what we got going on here. We've got a leaky carb. That carburetor is probably Dunsky. Put a hose clamp, vice grip on the hose so it doesn't leak any more fuel. Uh, so look, when I push on the primer bulb, right, I feel fuel in the primer bulb. So I think the channel and the gas, it's good. But the emulsion tube is blocked. So no, no fuel from the primer is going up. So I have a feeling that the primer bulb, actually, the assembly is good, but it's dirty. Motion tube blocked. So let's get some fluid into the intake manifold, see if we at least have spark. There we go, we had, we had a little thing. You know what? So uh, I think what I'm gonna do is, I have that other engine that I took off. It has a bad air filter base channel so that it doesn't prime, but this base actually seems like it'll prime. So maybe I'll swap an engine and put that engine on here. In the meantime, I gotta go find a cable for this thing to get the drive working. So uh, I'm gonna do this another day. See you guys later. First pump in this day. So I have a feeling that I'm going to be taking this engine off. I'm just going to put some penetrating oil right where the mounting bolts are so that I don't strip those bolts or at least try to minimize the possibility of stripping those bolts. Let that soak for a bit. And you know what? Let's check and see if this has a sheared keyway. I, I, uh, while I'm tired, I want to keep going. Just as I suspected. Just as I suspected. When you guys have a funny feeling, you know, about the timing and stuff, and it wants to pull out of your hand, that's a sign of a sheared key. As you guys can see, there's the key, and there's the key way. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's sheared and it's turned 45 degrees to the left. 
So we're going to have to get a new key for that keyway. I'm going to pull the bell handle down, hold it there so that the brake is off of the flywheel. I'm going to push downwards on this crowbar here so that it has upward leverage. Did that do it? I think that did it. So there's the flywheel and as you can see, oops, just fell, sheared key, the other one is over here. So I'm going to put a new key in there and then this should be back on timing again and get rid of some of these, some of this crap. cleaned up the area oh you know what let's let's brush off this uh, flywheel too look at that got the flywheel back on here and I have replaced it with a new key now since I have the whole top off I might as well take the carburetor off and see huh It looks like there's cement in there. Crazy, man. Look. It's like cement. What's cement doing in here? That's what's inside. Crazy, man. Do you even want to try to clean this? You know what I mean? I know you guys know what I mean. You're at a point where like, why bother? Why bother cleaning this? You should just go out and buy another one. Henry, you don't buy nothing. That's true. I might have another one, at least better than this, you know? Let's see if we can clean this. Too dirty, Henry. Can't clean it. Maybe. Actually, that's not too bad. The seat's actually good in there. Bowl's good. I mean, the float. The needle's good. The seat inside's good. All right, so look. We can test it by blowing carb spray through the emulsion tube to see if it's at least clear. If it's clear and not... If fluid goes through here and you could see it on the other side... Oh, then it is good. Alright, I'll try to clean it. Thank you. 
So, I uh, finally cleaned this carb as well as I can clean it, but then when I was ready to put this on, yeah, I saw this part of it was still on the throttle linkage. So I had actually broken it. So I just glued it, you know what I mean? Super glued it. I mean, as long as I can uh, attach this carburetor onto here, there's no heavy torque or, you know what I'm saying? It, as long as this moves this, that's all it, it does. It's, there's no like weight to, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter if it's cracked, whatever, it, it'll hold as long as I get it on there right, you know? So I'm gonna try to put this carburetor on. I cleaned it the best I could. I just wanna see if it works, but I, it, it's still pretty dirty in there from the uh, corrosion and stuff. But it, I don't think any pieces, I mean, some pieces might fall out, but uh, we'll see what happens, you know? I changed the, uh, the, the keyway, you know, the key and the, the flywheel. So, I mean, this thing should run, you know? So the minute I tried to put it on the Z-band, it broke. <laughs> See what I'm saying? So that, that didn't work. So looks like I'm gonna have to find another carburetor for this or um, try to change out this part at least. You know, you could just, you could just pull out the, the throttle flap. Like that, right? And then this thing comes out. If I could just get a new thing. I'll go look in my box of parts. So I found this in my uh, box of carburetors, and uh, it's a it's the same carburetor except this is an auto choke version. See, it has the choke flap with this thing here. But uh, there's a reason why I have it like this, and it's not like. See, it's it's the same thing. This is trash too. You know what I mean? So I wasn't planning on using this at all because this is just as bad as that one. But it uh, looks like I could probably cannibalize this and take this shaft. So I'm going to pull out the um, choke flap and use the shaft. There we go. And I'll put this shaft onto this one. <laughs> I don't know what's worse, using that one or using this one, you know? But uh, at least uh, we'll, we'll try this. Use the same exact thing. Is it the same exact thing? How did it go? Did it go this way? There we go. Perfect. All right, now I'll install it. All right. Oh my God. Oh. All right, look here, what do we do? Change the key out of the sheared key in the keyway. Clean the carburetor best we could. Replace the throttle plate and the shaft because I broke it. Loosened up the front wheels, moves forward and backwards. I also broke the drive cable, but it was rusted. It's not really my fault. I was pressing this primer thing, and believe it or not, it does prime. You guys think it'll start? Let's see. I think it'll start. One pull or two pulls? I say three pulls.
Now guys, did quite a lot to this. Still need a drive cable, see if the self-propulsion works, but uh, that's not bad. I'm glad I have it. I mean, it still looks like hell, you know, but uh, that's a big piece of getting this thing going, you know what I mean? Not perfect, of course, but we're there, you know? Getting the engine running, it primes. Looks like I might have unfrozen the uh, transmission. Yeah, it's a good day. Thanks a lot for joining me on this Toro Recycler refurbishing. Getting it going. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.